This one will be on how to tune a duplexer. <clears throat> this is a PD-526. In my personal and professional opinion, it's the best UHF duplexer out there and uh, has great isolation. It's a good bandpass band reject duplexer. And uh, this particular one is presently in the 440 ammeter spectrum but it needs to be tuned up to the 462 uh, GMRS uh, spectrum, General Mobile Radio Sa Service, also known as GMRS or GERMS, to make it even shorter. As far as duplexer, pl duplexers are concerned, <clears throat> it's critical as to which is the high side and which is the low side. Summer mark transmitter receive. You don't want to pay any attention to that. It only matters if it's the high side or the low side, meaning you are going to pass the higher frequency and reject the lower frequency, or pass the lower frequency and reject the higher frequency. So this one, as a matter of fact, this is where it's going to go. So that's the lower pass. It just happens to be the transmit side <clears throat> for this one. But again, that doesn't matter if it's on the transmitter or receiver. It's the lower frequency. Of course, the higher frequency is on the other side. First thing we want to do is find out where it is. So we want to make sure that it's a good operational duplexer before we touch it. It'll save a lot of grief. So first thing, find out where it is. To tune a duplexer, the best piece of test equipment is the tracking generator. This is an oscillos this is, excuse me, a spectrum analyzer slash tracking generator. We use the tracking generation generator portion of it. I've punched in since it's UHF. <clears throat> don't know exactly where it is. I know where it is, but we're pretending here that we don't. So I punched in 455 megahertz because I know it's going to be somewhere between 440 and 470. It's pretty obvious it'll be somewhere between there. And put in a span of uh, 15 megahertz. So we'll do that. <clears throat> and from there, we just take a matter of just tuning until we find it. And there's our band pass. Until our reject is just over here. Here's our pass. And we can look and see here that we're tuned roughly 443. So it's in the ham band. We need to move it up. <clears throat> so we're going to have to move this lower frequency from 443 to 462. And then likewise the higher side from 448 to 467. Okay, so as we tune this, we do one can at a time. Again, there's six separate bandpass band reject filter cans inside this housing. We do one at a time. And I've already set up the tracking generator here to find that this is tuned to the center frequency 443.500. And thus we will start turning on Right here and as you can tell we are moving it and we're going to keep going here until we are at 462.675 to save time I will pause the video just to save some time here until we get close to that Okay, we are getting closer here. We're set for 462.675. We're going to pretty much just peak it right about there for our band pass. That looks pretty good. Now we'll go take a look at our reject. Okay, there we go. There's our reject dialed in the 467 frequency. 
and to move the reject of course we loosen this top nut which I've already done so and then a straight blade screwdriver on here and carefully turn it until we line up the reject in the center there that's done tighten the nut make sure it doesn't move and it moved a little bit already so we'll tighten the nut not quite tight just a little not even a half a click of the wrist here and we'll take the screwdriver and one more little tweak there right there hold it there right a little tweak right there and then tighten the nut up again Make sure it doesn't move as we're tightening the nut, and we are good. Okay, that's one of the three for the low pass side. I'm gonna, rather than take all the time on the video to go through all three, because the procedure is the same, I will do all three and then be back and we'll look at the three as a unit. And now for the high pass. And I've already tuned it somewhat forgot to start the video again so we're pretty close to there and we're going to tune on the high pass side of it we want 467.675 and we're about there with that now let's go look at our reject to bring our reject uh, in some. Then loosen the nut, I already did, and then our screwdriver in there to move our reject. Right about there. And then tighten the nut. I'm tightening the nut with my other hand here. So make it flop around there. It's Barely finger tight, and I get the screwdriver and make another fine tweak on it. Oops, have to loosen it a little bit here. Take some patience and a little finesse here from time to time to do these. It's kind of hard to do it holding the camera with one hand and trying to do this with the other hand here. So we'll take a little bit of extra time and do this. Then I'm going to do the other ones off camera here and do our next uh, section of this when we test everything together as a unit. There we go. I'm going to get rid of the camera here so I can do this, but you catch the drift to get that centered in there. And then we'll tune the other three cans. I'll be back in a minute to show you a little trick here as we tune the next can here. Here's the time we're going to use this little trick that I showed in another video on uh, RF connectors. Rather than have to go through the effort of working these loose, this is the one downfall of the 526 is working these and connectors in here. They're very tight, very hard on the fingers, especially if you're old and have arthritis like me. So we'll do this little trick here that we showed in that other video. We'll take a BNC double female barrel and into that end male. And there we go. And we'll do the same thing on this other connector here and then proceed to tune the cans. I'll be back when the entire duplexer is tuned and ready for a final test. Okay, we're done testing it as a unit here. First thing we'll do is look at the insertion loss. What I've done is I've just connected my two cables together. There's our reference line there just under minus 23 dBm. So now let's hook up the 
uh, high pass side of the duplexer and look at our insertion loss. And there we go, we've got about 2 dB of insertion loss. That's not bad for the 526. We're looking at this at 1 dB per division. Let's go look at our reject now. There's our reject at 462.675. And uh, we're down uh, a good uh, 45 dB. We'll do the same on the low pass. Again, we have about a little over 2 dB of uh, assertion loss there, 2, 2 2.5 dB, which is fine. And uh, we'll look at the reject here. Got to go to 447, or 467, I mean. Six seven five. Uh, reconfigure some of this here. <clears throat> and uh, let's see. And spread it out a little bit here. And there we go. Okay, one more test. Let's put a transmitter and a watt meter on it. And uh, we're going to look at the, uh, uh, a load on the end of it with a uh, through line watt meter looking at reflected power from the duplexer. <coughs> and then we'll also look at uh, forward power out just to reconfirm our figures uh, here. The final little test here, we'll uh, take a look at reflected power from the duplexer back towards the transmitter. First we'll look at forward, make sure that we've got some good forward power there. That's a 50 watt slug. And we'll look at reflected. And the needle just maybe moves a needle's width. So we're good there. Okay now final test, we're going to go from the transmitter into the duplexer duplexer into the watt meter to look at real world insertion loss here on a watt meter. And we've got about 22, 23 watts. We had about 33 running into the watt meter first. So that's for round numbers, that's about a 2 dB uh, insertion loss in the duplexer here. So we're all good, ready to put this thing on the air.